Well, Josh, Michael Chandler has finally got his fight, his fight against Conor McGregor. It is coming up on International Fight Week. And now he has come out saying he wouldn't be surprised if that fight is for the title, but not the 155 pound title and not the 170 pound title that, you know, neither one holds. It would be the 165 pound weight class that the UFC has never used. Do you think that they might actually start to open up at 165 pound weight class and put Chandler against McGregor? in the first championship fight for that belt. Okay, hot take here. I actually do believe that they probably would do this, okay? okay. And it would totally not be warranted <laughs> at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's so many other people that are at 155 or 170. Deserving? That would be deserving of that title. Now, I understand why they're yeah. doing it. Look, connor has got to have a title. They've got to try to make it for a title. If it's Chandler <laughs> and Connor, they've got to try to make it for a title. I don't know. Whether it's the BMF, which it won't happen now, because Max is going to be hard to beat that performance. They want that. They want to let that marinate a little bit for a little bit oh, longer. Yeah. You, uh, you can ride off of that one. For <laughs> yeah, you got to let that one, you know, just sit there and marinate for a bit. Do you think that's fight of the year? Right now, at least. I mean, John, we're only, what, five months in? Four months in? Uh, that still could be fight of the year right now. Something might overtake it. Um, it was kind of a one-sided fight. Just because the way the finishing the finish happened, I'm not sure if I want to put it as fight of the year. I will probably give okay. it knockout of the year. As of yeah, right now, knockout no of the year for sure. But I'm saying like fight of the year, it was one sided. And when I think of fight okay. of the years, I think of Joanna and Wei Lee, where Wei Li comes back from two rounds down and wins the next three rounds and makes her look like the the person from Star Trek, the guy that has the little things on her forehead, no, the, whatever those are. The Elephant Man. No, what were those? What, remember the Elephant Man? What were the, the, the guys called on like? Star Trek that had like the, the the foreheads that were all veiny and don't, like don't, muscular? Don't, don't, don't. Oh, you think, wait, hold it, the uh, Klingons. Yeah, the Klingons, there you go. Very Thank good. John very knows, much. you also watch a lot of Star Wars or Star Trek back then. No, I was a Klingon that's, one time. Yeah, that's kind of what, <laughs> what Joanna's forehead looked like right there. <laughs> that's exactly what I looked like when they made me oh, up too. Oh, shit. <laughs> the one right there on the in the middle, the guy with the little arrow in the middle. Yeah, yep, that's yep, him. Yep, yep. The fine forehead. Yes, yes, he's a Klingon. Anyways, yes. great stuff. Anyways, um, John, where was I going with that? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't think it, you were saying that it was not as competitive as you would want to say. Fight yeah, of for year. fight of the year, I always look at fight of the years like a Yuri and a Glover fight. Some of this back and forth battle, a lot of mistakes, but a very action packed fight. And fun to watch, you know, and Yuri, uh, not Yuri, but uh, Joanna and Wei Li. I don't, fights like that, I think, are so much fight of the years. Knockouts like this, it was a one, it was a one sided fight. It was a close fight, could have been changed at any moment. I would have probably enabled a knockout of the year also if it was Justin. If he would have caught Max and came back, I mean, you, you got to think in terms of, for me, knockout of the year was Leon versus Usman. Like that was to yeah. me, knockout of the year. It was a great fight. Down five, you know, four rounds for basically four and a half, you know, and uh, no three. Oh, he won the first. He won the first. He round. won the first. Won correct. The first yeah, he did. lost the second. Third lost the fourth. second, third, and fourth. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the fight was there, man. The fight, like those are the things that I look at. So, all right, what are we? What are we talking about? Let's go. What are we talking about? <laughs> I'm all over the place right now. Boy, I'll tell you, you're all over the place. We were talking about the 165 pound weight class. And a championship belt being on the line between Michael Chandler and Conor McGregor. It's just not. It's not. It's like not a it. deserving fight. You don't like it. You don't like it. No, no. I, I'm not saying I don't like the fight. I'm saying for a title, I don't think it's a deserving fight. But I understand why they're going to do it. If they are going to do it, which there's a little bit of buzz that it potentially is going to happen, then one of they announce that 170 is going to 75. That's what I want to know. That would be the question, you know, because you've got <clears throat> Leon. Has Leon even been scheduled yet for Bilal? Dave has. No, I don't think he nothing's has. Nothing's really been said. <clears throat> Man, this is one that's like something's going on with somebody somewhere. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this division. You got Islam at the top at 155. You've got Armand Saruki at number one and the number one contender. You got Charles Oliveira at number two, Justin Gaethje. They still haven't really adjusted these things, have they? Yes, they oh, did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I thought I had read somewhere that Max was in the 50. Look at Max Holloway at number nine. No, no, no. I saw someone had posted yes, up yes, that yes. Max was number one. No, this is what I love. Or number two. This, Sorry, no, number this, two. This, the, stop. 
this is what I love, and this is what drives me crazy, and it's not just the UFC that does it. It's everyone. How is it that Justin <clears throat> Gaethje just had a fight with Max Holloway, and absolutely there's no denying who won that fight, and he's six places above him. I don't get it. It just doesn't make sense. John, you and I used to sit inside the the conference room and just pull our fucking hair out with Bellator. Bellator's with their rankings. Horrible. They're like, what in the hell? What are you doing, Dave? I'm trying to highlight for you guys that Max did move up in featherweight. So to suggest that, you know, maybe this is just an indication that he isn't actually moving up to 55. Like, so maybe the reason for ranking. I'm not saying I'm not saying he is moving up to 55. And and it could be very clear that Max, you know. Goes right back to 145. Great. But it's impossible to sit here and take a ranking seriously when you have a person that won a fight, dominated the fight, ends up with a knockout in the fight, and the one person that lost is now ranked. Instead of being ranked at number one Mm -hmm. or number two, he's ranked at number three, while the person that beat him He's down at number nine. Doesn't make any sense. Well, let, we're, we're going to talk about Max, but let's focus on Connor and Chandler here. <clears throat> no, no, that no. What we're talking about though is fighters that can go up from one fifty five and fighters that can come down from one seventy. That would be yeah. more, um, would be more deserving of that title shot at one sixty five, especially if it's the very first one. I mean, it's Connor yeah. McGregor. That's the only thing that I can think of that would would. Maybe that's what they had to do to get the thing done. Maybe it is. You know, it might have been that, you know, part of the whole negotiation was, hey, this should be for a title. Okay. Is this, but let me ask you this. Does it discredit the fact that there hasn't been a three division champion in a major promotion? I mean, I know you have the one right now, the guy over in one, right? I know you have that over there. If you, we want to count that he's a three division champion. Yeah. Was it Malkin? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have him. Uh, I know that in King of the Cage, um, <clears throat> Juan Archuleta did it, 135, 45, 55. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I mean, I got to mention him. He did, He's done it. Yeah. But, you know, in terms of <clears throat> Patricio tried it in Bellator, came up short against Pettis. You know, we did it in 45 and 55 against Chandler. He knocked out Chandler in 55. I mean, you could say Leon maybe could make 65. I don't know if he'd be the same fighter if he did that. There'd be no reason for him to do that when he's fighting so well right now at the weight he's at. But, I mean, everyone's told us that Colby Covington, your boy, Dave, could make that weight. Did you hear me, Dave? Your boy? Your boy? Yeah. Right, because he's talking a lot of shit right now to, to Ian Gary. Well, I think Ian Gary could make that weight. You think so? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's got a tall, yep. long, and lanky. And I think, dude, he would chase Colby <clears throat> into that 165 pound. Oh, yeah. Class. But so those are guys that I feel like if I'm talking that are probably a little bit more deserving. But look, it's Conor McGregor. It's Michael Chandler. You know they're going to have a great fight. It's going to be for a title. But now what do you do with that 70-pound division? Because they haven't talked about moving that up yet. I haven't heard anything about that yet. And if they're going to have to move that up quickly, and those fighters that are training right now for fights coming up, they've got to know. Do they? They don't have to. They don't have to what? They, They can keep 170 and have 165. That's a lame. I'm not saying it. I don't think it's yeah. the smartest. I would like world, to see them could. add that only because then you have weight classes every 10 pounds to, until you get to 185. I agree. It makes sense. I agree. Yeah. I think because. Especially when I think the, the UFC is the one promotion that you can look at and say, look, you have enough fighters. You can absolutely have an additional weight class you, and, and not hurt yourself. Well, John, let's be honest. I mean, they're going to probably end up getting a bunch of new fighters here pretty soon anyways. <clears throat> So <laughs> I have no idea what you're saying. Yeah. Let's be honest. They're going to probably end up with a bunch of new fighters in these weight classes. So they got to start filling these voids. There's going to be a lot of talent coming in to start, uh, you know, uh, dabbling around in there. So it's going to be good. I think that the UFC has got what? 600 something fighters under their roster. Oh, over 600. Yeah. Something like that. Somewhere around there. So it's going to be good, man. It's going to be interesting to see. I, I am encouraged to hear that because for the longest time, I wish they had this weight class because yeah. there was a lot of guys that were weight bullies when I was getting older and I would have liked them to go to 165, you know, because I was a 55 pounder. Yeah. Always was, always had been. So, you know, I had the one fight at 143, but like I, I were weight bullies, man. All these guys were weight bullies when I was getting older. You were a weight bully when you went did against Yamamoto, man. That was just wrong. Of you. Yeah, it was. 
<laughs> yeah, I was. I was actually surprised I actually made the weight. 143 pounds was a lot. Uh, all right, but I mean, John, what's your? Give me your take. Who do you think deserves it? And what? How do you? Do you see this happening? I mean, look, you're a little bit more on the inside. Inside, come on. No, I'm not on the inside. Tell on this me, at all. don't lie to me now. I, I, look, I can tell you, so you I can't I make eye contact, guys. A, you can't make eye contact. I, re- I recently had a conversation with a uh, a person that is a a, uh, a well known uh, employee of the UFC and stuff, and you know, I got nothing as far as this being a title fight, but it definitely could be. And and if you if, if you're the UFC and you're going to do this. Really, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you put it as, you know, the fight with Chandler and Connor, and it makes sense because they do better with Connor being a champion. Yeah, that's true. Let's, let's just be honest. They do better, and so it's a business. And so why not say, well, you know, right now we don't have that weight class, so this is what we're going to – we're going to say that this is the fight that starts it off, and if people want to go to that weight class, you know, let, you know, McMaynard and let Sean Shelby know. That you want to be in that weight class. Dana, and then we'll go from Dana there. White talking to all the fans, just fucking saying, let them cook, baby. Let them cook. <laughs> hey, right now, Dana White is sitting there in a position where life is good. Everything that he's been doing has, uh, has really come together. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I, I, I don't know what. He had the moment with the whole incident in Mexico. And since that moment, he's been like so much more in control. I don't know if it's that he's more healthy based upon the, I know he did that diet stuff. Maybe, you know, no alcohol or anything like that, but he has been, you know, sharp and, you know, attacking things when he wants the way he wants to do it, stepping up and, you know, taking care of people the way he wants. He's, he's been on point. You can't sit there and say anything, but the dude's got that company fucking running and running well. This is going to be another like kind of hot take, <clears throat> but hot take. yeah, it's kind of like a little bit of a hot take. Look, and I, and then no way am I trying to uh, compare like any of the history. I'm going to throw this out there in terms of history. He always had a promotion, whether it was Pride, whether it was Strike Force, Bellator. He always had a promotion that was kind of always a little bit there, like a nagging injury, like and irritating, irritating. like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, okay. I have a fighter yeah, that I okay. like, but guess what? They can, fuck, they're going to pay them more. Like going to steal one of my fighters. It was that nagging. He doesn't have that anymore. Well, nah, John, it, we're not, but we don't, he doesn't, he, there's like, no, he, there's he, when the PFL, when the PFL signed Shane Burgos, he was one of the first people that came out and said, we screwed that up. They screwed it up. Yeah. Like, he understands that they yeah. screwed that up. Yeah, <clears throat> but in these situations right now, he doesn't have that anymore. Like they, you know, they're gonna they mm-hmm. lost you know they lost Francis to the PFL. They lost Shane Burgos to PFL. They're gonna lose some fighters there, you know. And the and the enticement of going to the PFL because of the one million dollar contract for to win the tournament, it's there. Sure. Um, yeah. you know, and then judge and then not judge, but uh, managers read the contracts and then they they get into these tournament contracts that are a little tricky. So you gotta be very cautious and careful. Where uh, managers are. And so that yeah. being said, but all of this stuff, Bellator now is consumed and wrapped into the PFL, the two promotions together. They are operating separately. But for the first time, I think with the UFC, they really feel like there's not much of a threat out there. We have the control. Not that as if they were threatening, but that's a nuisance out there. There never was they a didn't threat. Have much of a threat. They haven't had a threat since they bought Pride. Let's be honest. Even Strike. Yeah, even Strike. For, but. Wasn't Strike Force was getting gaining a lot of ground. It was like it was actually gaining ground Str- on them. Strike Force was gaining credibility. Yes. Okay. As, as a promotion, it was gaining credibility as hey man, there's some really good talent over there. There's some people fighting big fights. There was the matchups that people wanted to see. But even with that, you know, the, it's not like Strike Force was, you know in a position to challenge the UFC. No, they weren't. They weren't, but I mean, they were doing things though that, you know, Bellator was just starting to do right towards the end. There were selling out big arenas. Their first, their first show in California was 19,800. I believe 800 something. 18,000. Hey, sorry. 18. 18 I thought it was 19,800. Yeah. No, no, no. Cause the, the one that beat it was in, uh, Columbus, Ohio at 60 at UFC 68. That was 19. Oh, okay. Okay. 
It was eighteen. But it was eighteen thousand something. Okay. Was yeah. the first that, it held that record for freaking years. For a long time. Yeah. But hey, like I said, Dana's gonna say, let it cook, man. Everyone's just gonna wait for his answer on whether it's gonna be changed out or not. He's always said that he's against the one sixty five because he likes where it is, the weight classes are doing well. But the 155 pound division is always stacked because we're the best fighters in the world. And the 170 pound goes. division is also cooking right now. And he's got a lot of good fighters in there with younger guys coming up and making names. So some of those guys may drop down into the 65. You could have three solid weight classes and some damn good fights if you let it cook. 